Hi, I'm Michael Albrando with Phil Jones Bass. We're here at Uncle Studios in beautiful downtown Van Nuys, California. I'm here with no, none other than Phil Jones, our CEO and founder of our company. Hi there. And I'd like to introduce my dear friend here, Mr. Larry Campbell, who is a uh, bass master. He's played with uh, greats like uh, the late George Duke, uh, Rachel Farrell, Anita Baker, and now he's with Frankie Beverly, not Frankie Valley. Frankie not Beverly, Frankie Valley, but Frankie Mace Beverly. On tour, um, going to be in St. Louis, uh, Shavitz Arena, February the Frankie 14th. Frankie Valley should be so lucky. Yeah, and the oh, Jersey Boys. And the so Jersey uh, Boys. we've brought Larry along because he's just a phenomenal bass player. He plays a million times better than us two. Than us you know, two put so, together. Uh, oh, so, uh, <laughs> so we figured that who better to uh, demonstrate some of our products that we're going to be talking about today. And first off, it's going to be the suitcase model. As you can see behind us, and you'll probably see on the teleprompter soon. Yeah. We have a couple of questions. Well, we get more than a couple of questions from folks who have written in over the years, you know, just asking certain questions about this particular product. And one I have in mind that, you know, we'd been dying to hear Phil's take on is, is basically the suitcase is equipped with two independent graphic e equalizers in it. And what is your take on that? And what is the concept behind that? Well, well basically, um, sometimes, you know, you, you go to a gig and you might want to have more than one bass, you know, like... Uh, you might have a, a, a fretless uh, four string, mm -hmm. five string with rounds on it. it may play an upright bass. So you yeah. can, you can pre-EQ the channels and have them set exactly how you want them. And then you don't have to think about having to change back to different tones. You know, you've got it there. Mm -hmm. That's why. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, moving right along, since we do, uh, one question that came from one of our users in Philadelphia. Uh, he asked about the digital power in, in this particular amplifier. And uh, let me see here if I can read it from his uh, email. Like most of the Phil Jones combos, the suitcase uses digital power amplification sections. What is the purpose and the difference behind your digital amplification as opposed to your solid state? Well, I got a surprise. Uh, that's actually not a digital amp. That's an analog amp. Okay. And uh, the reason is it's one of our very first designs. We started off with a briefcase, and people kept on asking, oh, I want to buy that um, suitcase amp of yours. So yeah. they already named it the next amp, and that was <laughs> a, amp number two was a suitcase. And uh, it's an analog amp with an uh, analog power supply, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just a very, very good, trusted, solid workhorse of an amplifier. Excellent. I, I do agree. Uh, another question folks have asked is uh, the extension cabin, the 4B. The 4B, yeah. And, and how does that change the wattage on this particular amplifier? Well, well you see how amplifiers work is, is uh, they, um, particularly solid state amps, they, they, they tend to put out more power into lower impedance yeah. loads. So you have an 8 ohm internal speaker on the suitcase and then another 8 ohm below. Mm -hmm. And that basically gives you uh, double the power. So you basically have a 4 ohm load on the amp and it's mm -hmm. going to put out the same voltage across all the speakers, that's why. And uh, that's what was being used tonight, you know, with, with, with uh, the band. So traditionally, I mean, we, we, the, the concept behind the, the suitcase originally, when you came up with the idea, you wanted something that was going to be versatile for people who played both upright bass and both electric bass and needed to switch between the yeah, two? Yeah, it, it, it was because at that time, you know, uh, we just came out with one of our first amps, which was the briefcase. And as you know, the briefcases are a very clean amp. It just sometimes needed more power. Mm -hmm. So we basically took uh, a, a double the size uh, speaker enclosure, put four drivers mm -hmm. in it, and then put in a, a really powerful amplifier so you could run it with uh, the four internal speakers you know, get mm -hmm. by with most gigs, but if you really want to mm -hmm. rock out with it, put mm -hmm. the four B on and that will hold its own with a good drummer. Awesome. Another question I, I hear all the time, Phil, is, uh, Neodymium versus ceramic magnets. Now I know with the suitcase, it is ceramic magnets, probably for the fact that it was one of your first creations in yeah. the earlier lines, but could you elaborate the differences for the folks well, out there well, between the Neo and the ceramic magnet? Well, there's always a trade-off whenever you, 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 you change. I mean, one thing with the, with the Neo is you, you got the advantage of weight. So if you're having a lot of drivers in a cabinet, and you put Neo drivers in, you're going to reduce a lot of weight. You know, it could be 30, 40 
50, mm -hmm. 60 pound weight in, in cabinet weight. Because the, cer the ceramic are much heavier magnets than the nail. But the ceramic magnets are still, they got a lot of torque. They, they, they really put out a lot of um, extreme uh, bottom end, even when the speaker starts running hard. You know, they, 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 the, the magnets, they, uh, how can I say, high flux. They, they, don't, they don't seem to crumble mm -hmm. like the, the, the nails do. You know. But the nails are very good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a nail. It's just that it's uh, a little bit of a trade off in terms of performance. Now, you're a five string bass player because you had a huge collection, I know that. Larry's a five string guy, I'm a, I play a five string as well. It's, it seems to be an industry standard. How do these five inch drivers handle a B string? Well, I, I think these days five strings become the norm. You know, back in the days of when we listened to vinyl records, it was very difficult to cut the B string on vinyl, you know, because of the RIAA. Um, curve, you, you had to filter it off at 40. Mm -hmm. Now with, with digital recording, you know, it's opened up a whole new world of, of sub bass, you know, there's, you know, nine string basses out there. Sure, sure. So, so um, I think the standard these days is going to be more and more common to be five string. So all our amps are designed to really take five string bass with ease, you know, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lover of the lower end anyway. Oh, I like sure, the, sure, the soul, of course. You know? <laughs> I hear you. Unreal. I think right now uh, it would be great if we could, you know, maybe hear Larry demoing yeah. the suitcase combo uh, along with the 4B and we could sort of get an idea. Larry's also going to be playing, uh, what do you have there, your exotic yes, XJ? Um, yes. Five. Five strings. Very, very cool. Yes, indeed. From the exotic folk, always making yeah. great stuff and exactly. a great product. So let's, uh, let's, let's, if we can get a, you know, okay. a quick little demo. And, and now I think it'd be great to hear Larry playing through the suitcase combo. Sure, why not? All right. All right cool. um, once again, this is a exotic. I love this bass. And the, um, I have a 130. Uh, on the B on string. The B string. Okay. So it's pretty, pretty thick. And this is what it sounds like. On the money, on the money. Mm -hmm. All right. Unreal. Loving it. Loving it. Yeah. The single five inch driver, it, it seems to just cover the entire spectrum of this bass. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter where he's going with, with the low B or even, you know, thumping and plucking with the G string there, it, it just seems like everything is, it, it's, it's taking the full spectrum of the instrument and reproducing it. Well, that's because when you, when you got a small cone, it, it, it responds faster. Think of it like a, like a, how a school of fish, you know, like thousands of fish in the ocean can just move on a dime, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and a whale, right, mm -hmm. which is like, like a big speaker, mm -hmm. it takes, it's ponderous, it's slow, it takes a long time to kind of move around. Mm -hmm. When you've got lots of multiple small drivers, it's instant, it's just, it's, it's following exactly what the, the, the players do. And doing. you don't seem to lose any of the bass response You don't at lose, all. no, no, you don't lose the bass. Un unreal. Because you've got the same area uh, of, of a large driver, but they're all working together. Mm -hmm. And does that, in a sense, give you more of that natural tone of the instrument? And less, you know, a lot of the leading manufacturers have a lot of coloration in, in their amplifiers. And the way their, their speakers are tuned, especially as well, uh, it, with that, come into play? It's, it's part of it, you know. I mean, the other thing is that you've got to have a solid cabinet. You know, if you, if you, if you put a driver into a cardboard box, no matter how good the speaker is, it's going to sound like a cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> so the cabinet has to be very rigid. And we, we, they're, they're heavily braced cabinet, very strong. And they, 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 they're very low coloration cabinet as well. Now, is there a process that you go through? Because I'm, I'm in sales, so I don't see the process oh, that yeah. goes on at the factory. <laughs> but could you maybe real quick tell us a bit of the process that goes in testing 
most of the, the speaker well, cabinets? Well, I, I mean, there's, there's, first of all, you've got the stages of, of development, you know, coming out with a new product. Mm -hmm. And that can take years, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. I don't release anything until I'm really happy with it. Mm -hmm. And every, everything I've released, I've gigged with myself. I've taken uh, out yeah. the gigs, you know, because I'm a bass player. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that when we do the, um, the, 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 the testing of each individual speaker in production, they're power tested for like, you know, 40 hours at full power continuously mm -hmm. to make sure that if they're going to fail, they're going to fail then, you know. Mm -hmm. wow. and, and, you know, we, we've, because we've got a lot more speakers in our cabinets than anyone else has, <laughs> um, I can probably count on one hand um, all the failures we've ever had in the 12-year history of the company. And then we're talking, you know, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of speaker units and probably a handful of failures out of that which is you know, Unbelievable. quite remarkable that is on the money they don't the they money. don't blow up that's great well uh you know what i, I think we sort of covered a, a, a lot with this particular product and the, There'll probably be more in a series of, of different videos for various Phil Jones products. But right now, I think uh, if, if you could maybe play us out, sure. uh, Larry, it would be great. Once again, I'm Michael Albronda from Phil Jones Base. We have the actual Phil Jones himself and the great Larry Compel. Thank you so much. <laughs>